talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about approaches that Mapbox has tried, um, an incident we faced recently, and how I kind of see the future, how it has to go forward to tackle quality problems. And let me try to switch over. Um, the goal is how can we validate every change in OpenStreetMap so we can guarantee nothing bad is in there. Over the past recent years, one thing that has come up again and again is vandalism. And what we'd like to call them is harmful edits because not always do you intend to break the map. And this is actually normal. As online communities grow and you have more and more diverse actors from different backgrounds, and also the amount of destructive actors grows. And Wikipedia actually faced this problem back in 2011. There was this phase in Wikipedia where people said, are you sure that it's accurate? And at one point, 7% of Wikipedia was vandalism. And we're not even near that point. And Wikipedia back then has taken a number of steps and tackled this as organization and focused on it for two or three years until we are at the state of today where you when have you last heard about Wikipedia vandalism? And that's a state where I want to get to in OpenStreetMap. It's really important that the user trusts OpenStreetMap in all end consumer applications they use. As soon as they see something that hurts them or when you have vandalism, you break that trust. And we as OpenStreetMap don't want to break that trust because we want to reflect the world around us. And to give some ideas of what kind of things we see, um, a lot, this is per one million changes, most of it is kind of labels that are incorrectly. That could be a city name that has an email address in it, for example. Then kind of the next most frequent case that we see is editing errors. You know, when you map a way and you kind of take that node and tuck, it slips and is across the other side of the globe. <laughs> That's, uh, we see like the, this is the second most frequent use case that happens. Then you also have people on Null Island that are really happily spamming away fantasy features. We have harmful deletions. This is if you decide to delete Detroit. You can do that in OpenStreetMap. We also have only around 50 obscene labels per million. That's when you really want to try to hurt someone and you rename Detroit to. And then another really interesting case that can be really drastic is graffitis. That's when you kind of hack the map how it looks like and draw something like this which I think is pretty impressive. You do that, can do that in OSM. And this is some example of places. We see more and more people kind of advertising their businesses, renaming Chaipur or Dili to that you're the best dentist or you should visit this store. And that makes sense because you get a lot of exposure. We're at a point where you see hundreds of millions of users use OSM. And here you have a big Cristiano Ronaldo fan. Um, there you see something that probably likely was an SVG import. You see a big bird that's kind of mapped as a building, so these kind of things. And then you also see something like this that looks really bad, but in fact is road snapping gone wrong in an editor. Um, these are all kind of harmful edits that really break the map that we want to prevent. And past approaches of Mapbox have kind of been, okay, we write software that kind of finds these dangerous cases and flags them for review. A person goes through that and then decides whether to fix it or not and then fixes it. And then this is kind of a, blacklisting approach. You take a selected range of things you think they're bad and you look at them. We've since then kind of pivoted to more of a whitelisting approach where the AI just looks at it and kind of decides, can this be potentially even harmful? And around 20 or 30% of cases cannot really do something to the map. And those might not need another reviewer. It's okay if machine review can tell you this is good. For nearly everything else, we have, have at least one human look at it. And that's kind of our review layer. Um, we sometimes do more than one person. And in the end, if someone decides, OK, this looks suspicious, this is not good, it goes to an analyst, which makes the final call whether an edit should come into our map box base maps or not. And this kind of all served us well until last August. Um, I'm going to talk a bit more how we practically do that. We kind of take the OSM big monolayer of all the tags. We slice it horizontally. You can think primary tags. So we take, slice it into the road layer, the water layer, the building layer. Then we take a snapshot each day and we diff each day with the next day. And so then you kind of get the changed features, the state that just changed in that day. 
And then you take that and you abandon the change set. You kind of cluster it into your own new unit. We do that by spatial proximity. And that's because the change set is arbitrary. You can make as many or as few change sets as you'd like. And I think this is a really interesting company that we're probably going to see more companies explore, kind of a different notion of a change set internally. And then we take those changes, we ran algorithms on them that check profanity or are those impossible angles, but we also look at them in an image or as a label, and we give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and only the good changes ever make it to the Mapbox maps. And all the things we find back, bad, we share back to a tool called OSMCHA, and so the community sees what we flagged as bad, and we try to fix those. Uh, there you see kind of an older version of our review tool where we kind of flip through images, and you're going to see that I'm going to find something. I'm going to um, hit this is bad, and then kind of categorize it into more granular categories. And there are different cases for different layers where we go through around 70,000 edits like this every day often multiple times. And this whole process broke down last August. And what happened is in New York City, there was a, a vandal going around that renamed the New York node and several labels around it. And nearly all of those changes got cut except one that made it to our map. And I'm going to give a little postmortem of how, how did that happen. And then we're going to look what we did to mitigate that in the future. And the little postmortem is that user went in there just before midnight and vandalized a bunch of stuff. And at zero UTC, we kind of take that snapshot. Because I told you we take those daily snapshots that we diff. So unluckily, we took a snapshot where that was still in there. But that's expected. We're supposed to be protected against that. Then two hours later, in OSM, that got fixed. I think that's kind of a fair window to expect from OSM to fix. It's not. It's not great. It's not too bad. Um, but that was a, a, a separate day for us. This was a different unit of change. And then of the, on the 15th, we reviewed those days kind of day by day. We got to review that day. And that edit accidentally got approved. And I'm going to explain more how that happened. And then only five days later, after that user went around and vandalized, did he get banned from OSM. And I think that's kind of interesting, too, where you have to get a bit quicker. And some days pass, August 30th, we roll out our map updates. We usually try to be around seven days behind. In this case, it was a bit slower. And so as those map updates rolled out, that vandalized label came into our map. And we got a notice that this happened. And within one hour, we went in, we fixed it from our maps and purged the caches. And we've seen that several thousand users hit that API endpoint and have seen that. But someone took a screenshot. And in the day of internet, it doesn't matter how many users you have or how many users have seen something. Once you have a screenshot out there and a tweet, it kind of circulates. And it's really interesting how, how kind of minor things like these can bubble up into a big reputation damage. And I think that applies to everyone and was really shocking to see. Um, and we are really disgusted by that attack and have since taken measures to work towards that. And a big one, what we found in our postmortem is that there was a single point for human error. Um, this is kind of the view that an analyst finally got presented. So AI flagged it as bad. A reviewer, reviewer said it was bad. But in the end, it's all, all those information comes to an analyst. And they see all the detections that are made marked as bad by a reviewer. And she or he can make the final call. Well, is it actually good? I can override that. And a single person was able to make that call. And in this case, we saw only two seconds was spent on that. And so someone accidentally approved this, even though it was never meant to be. We saw that all the other edits got caught. And this was actually the one that's most obvious. So we know this, this was something that slipped through, through intention. And we've since mitigated that and tested that this doesn't happen again. And when there's a single human in the loop that can go wrong, you have several keys. You introduce process redundancy for everything bad that can happen. And so what we've introduced since is kind of a consensus voting that needs to go through for every edit. So in order for an edit to get to our maps, four people have to agree that it is good in this case. So if one person disagrees, that edit doesn't go through. That also applies to the analyst stage. So if an analyst slips once, in the future we protect it against that. And so 
that's in your review process, I have to encourage you to really find and seek for those single points of failure where a human can um, make a mistake and then try to eliminate those. For example, by introducing redundancy. And we've seen that by this method, we get to 99.99% accuracy in detecting a bad edit. We've also done efforts to see kind of these more impactful features like place names and monitor them more closely. We also introduced a red team, and this comes from the security world. It is an interesting practice where you have your blue team that tries to review OSM and tries to defend it. And then you have a separate organization unit that tries to break that team. And that doesn't go through OSM, that's internally. And it's really interesting, instead of having your internal team test themselves, having another unit do that kind of immediately exposes you to way more real threats and allows you to do penetration testing in-house. And that helps us a lot and gives us confidence we're protected better now. We also had an improved context for the analysts. So if someone in the community flags something as bad in OSM CHA, you're going to see that now in the review tool. If we, we regularly look through the fixes of the OSM community and sift through the reverts to see, oh, was there something bad in the past that's not yet fixed or something bad in the past that made it into our map? And so all those efforts we've done internally to, to be protected. But for OSM as a whole, I would love if like in one or two years we can look back and say, yeah, we tackled that, like Wikipedia. And it's not, it's not a problem to talk about that. And there are multiple angles to go at this, and this won't be easy. We don't have like Wikipedia, a single structure that can kind of guide us. We all have to kind of find our way to tackle this. And there's also no magic sauce to it. Um, I see kind of three vectors where we can kind of address this problem. One is the, uh, the edits that come in the volume that comes in. A lot of it is actually not intentionally bad. It's contributions that come bad by an editor. For example, I dragged a node or I accidentally deleted something. The more we can avoid these kind of things, you see we can bring the volume of vandalism or harmful edits down by around 50%. That's a really easy one to tackle. And then the second big dimension is the detecting vandalism. As we get edits every day, um, we have tools like OSM Char now where you can go through and you can find whether something that is harmful and mark it as bad. We have to get really, really good at that. Uh, statistically speaking, if you would build an API that needs to be up, it needs to be up 99.99% of the time. That's a really expensive number of nines to get to. And there's a number of tooling innovations that need to happen and algorithms that need to be written, but there's also no single magic bullet. It's kind of several cases that need to move and improve to get better on the detection side. And then we have kind of the last piece that gets often neglected. There's a lot of vandalism already in OpenStreetMap, and in the end, the local contributor knows best. There are languages we don't speak. There are kind of cultural references only you get, and that's where the community comes in and map gardening needs to, to get better. We need better tools for that, that the community can kind of see issues, flag them, fix them, and then also mark those bad edits and their hot fixes to it. And how, on the prevention angle, what are easy things we can do? There's one really easy one that I want to tackle right away, which is someone could write a bot now that registers to OSM using a throwaway email address and just register every day and start spamming OSM. That's actually way too easy right now. Uh, we have to implement some safeguards. I don't want to make it harder in OSM to sign up, but at least some safeguards that a bot cannot sign up. Another one is improved editor validation. If you know, Chosm has this um, validation plugin that's actually really, really great and prevents a lot of mistakes. Now, the folks at Facebook have done an amazing job of kind of bringing that back into ID. So a big effort that we do here is kind of mainlining that back into the ID editor. So hopefully, ID will prevent you from shooting yourself in the foot in all cases. And that will, that will reduce a big amount of harmful edits and improve quality. And then on the detection side, we have different companies trying different approaches and we have to innovate there. But one big thing I see is um, that we kind of need a central hub to store all those annotations of change sets. So if I say a change set is bad, it doesn't help anyone if only Mapbox knows that change set is bad. And even if we fix that change set, 
someone will have pulled a snapshot from earlier that time and still got that bad data in there. Um, that's, that's the reality that everyone pulls a snapshot and it lags a little bit behind, even though we in OSM are often see the OSM.org map and see it up to date. And also, I talked a little bit about human redundancy. If we all store our separate annotations of change set as a different companies and community, we kind of create the process redundancy so that even if something slips at one place, it doesn't at the other. And this would mean having a central hub that could be OSM CHA where we tag, oh, this was a harmful change set. And we also tag, this was a hot fix for that change set. And with these two information, we can then continuously go through and fix those issues, and everyone can know about them. And how that could look like um, in OSM CHA is everyone can kind of post detections to a change set. So you can see all those change sets here. And there are some change sets that Mapbox probably flagged. Facebook detected profanity somewhere. Microsoft found some road errors. Apple found some consistency errors. Then Telenav found a one-way restriction. And if all these kind of harmful detections, if they have high confidence, can be stored somewhere, we can then together give that a thumbs down and mark it as bad. And having a system like that in winning the war, having another analogy, um, we, if we think about OSM, it's eventually consistent. Every bad edit in OSM will eventually be fixed. It's just a matter of time. It might take two hours. We've seen it might take a year until sometimes the label gets fixed. But the OSM community is kind of ahead of everyone. So in this analogy, it's like the cavalry. It will hit most of the impact. It will see it first. It will brace the vandalism first and fix it. You see in New York, the OSM community sees it, and it stayed two hours on OSM. And it's also not an end consumer product, so OpenStreetMap is actually perfect for seeing things first and fixing them. But then if that doesn't go anywhere, no one knows about it. And the community is also not good at sifting through 70,000 things each day because it's not a job, it's a hobby. And that's where kind of the second line of defense come in, kind of our, our slower companies that will be more reliable in going through everything, but they might miss local context. And with a central repository, they can then pull from what the OSM community flagged and kind of backport that and fix that. And as they go through all the days and validate that, they can also contribute back and say, oh, we found that, and we need to fix this. And this, if in two years we could have a concept like that, where if you go on planet.osm.org and you could download a validated PBF that not only is like a weekly PBF, but it's probably a quarterly snapshot, and we've stripped away all the change sets that are bad from that PBF, and we've incorporate, selected all the change sets that are hot fixes to things that are already bad in the map, and we apply that to a PBF, and we kind of get to a validated world of the view, uh, validated view of the world that we could publish on planet.osm.org. And that would actually be my ideal scenario if in two years we have that. That will skyrocket adoption among government agencies and other companies, and for smaller companies, make it easier to do their validation. And on the map gardening side, we need to make it easier to report to the DWG. You could even imagine kind of a report button if you see a bad change set. We need to increase the DWG in staffing, um, have a strong vision there. Maybe we set up a feedback form. We also need to publish fixes that the DWG does and user bans. And given that, companies can then retroactively fix things in their data. And there's also big potential in third-party monitoring tools. So in some examples like something that monitors how far away Wikidata distance is from an OSM node, or this tool by DevSeed that over time looks at satellite imagery, how it changes, and then can tell you, oh, is it actually possible that a new building is mapped there? And all those specialized tools, if they can feed back into one central repository and flag that, we, we all benefit from that. And then something controversial to think about in the future, maybe in two years we have automatic revert bots. Um, we, this served Wikipedia really well, and if you can have a precision of 90%, let's say I do rename Dilly to something bad or I delete entire New York, a revert bot, it's a very clear case. It could go back, revert that, 
And this really restores trust in the community and also shows clearly our stance on vandalism. Um, just an example how that could look like. And so the, the final closing case is harmful edits are a growing problem. I've stood on this stage before and thought, ah, we kind of got it under control, but we see this trend week in week that um, it's, a, it's a growing problem. And we have to tackle this as a first class problem in OpenStreetMap. And protecting the map is important to retain our trust. And the only way I see that is by collaborating our data on a central place, having a central repository to do that. And also to realize there's no magic sauce. There's no single algorithm you can write that detects all these things. There's a lot of different efforts in NLP, in human review, in tools, in community guarding that all need to work together. So in two years, we can look back and say, oh, there's been no news of OSM vandalism in a year. Thank you. Question. You, you want to know how many people work on this? I can tell you we look through 70,000 edits every day, and we look at every edit at least three times. <laughs> and it is doable. We're doing it. <laughs> and oh, I can say some more. If you, have, if you buy a commercial crowdsourced map, and you look at their data quality, um, you often see the same kind of problems, and if you think about what you have to do to the data to get it to a valid state, I think it's totally worth it, that amount of money. Yeah. Um, I think this is a tricky one. There's a lot to learn from Wikimedia. Um, Min wrote a good blog post about it. OSM is not mature yet to lock down complete objects, probably. But Wikipedia has kind of these locks where you can kind of partially lock a page. That's an interesting concept. I didn't want to bring it up here, but I think one can think about that. And kind of defining critical features. Yeah, that could be worth opening up that definition. I don't think that causes more harm than good. Yeah. Yeah, I ag I agree. It, w it would be lovely to get stable identifiers in OpenStreetMap. OK. Uh, first thing, as an organization, I think you already need to have your redundancy on your own. You should never rely on the community to do like this big, large scale legwork. I do think, because this local knowledge aspect of it, that it would be lovely to, and, and that's what OSM Cha is for, that the community can go in and validate. One can just never rely on that. But it's this other element that will catch cases that only you with local knowledge can have. Um, in terms of cross-company or if someone is paid to do this collaboration, that's possible. That just needs some time to grow. 
relationships and find where can one collaborate. The role of governments, I think a really interesting one is having, one is providing government data sets, gives you kind of a reference set for those stable features that we heard. So you can kind of measure how much roads deviate from the official road. That's one big way governments can help. Other than that, I don't think they're a different actor than the community. Except they will probably benefit the most from this because from what I've been talking with people, there's always a big concern kind of data quality and problems like these. And it's for them, this would kind of completely get rid of those worries. A gold planet, planet kind of approach. Okay, yeah. So if you find vandalism in your map and you go to that feature, you figure out what change set caused it, you go to OSMCHA and you mark that change set as bad. Um, because, and you also revert that change set, please. You, one can always parse the reverts to find out what is good and bad, but the revert doesn't mean something prior to that was vandalism. And so going into OSMCHA and marking that change set as bad helps a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I had another slide in there. So I think reputation matters a lot to guess whether something is good. It doesn't help to know whether something is bad because users just create accounts on the fly all the time. Um, so a reputation system, I think, could come into account for this Wikipedia-style page lockdown where um, New York, you could only edit if you have 100 edits over the past 150 days. I think for OSM, this is kind of really tricky to navigate. Um, so I think no one has really figured out the reputation system. And we've, we've tried a lot with reputation, and we know that new users are way more prone to vandalism. But it doesn't mean anyone with a 1,000 or 3,000 change set doesn't make vandalism. We've seen people throw away their reputation to make a political statement. So if you want to write a tool that, or if someone does research about user reputation, that does help. Yeah. Or having an API, like how did you contribute? Getting a bit more elaborate than that, that does help. to kick me off the stage now. Right? Yeah.